incredibly happy to be sharing this video with you today around future scenarios. I work with the future. I'm a faculty member at a few universities, always researching this idea about the future. But in my recent years of doing this work, I've started to realize that our psychology around the future might even be more important than the actual future. And I've started to call myself a futures strategist. In other words, there's multiple futures for us to be working towards. And if we understand this idea of multiple futures, we really start to realize that there isn't really a future that we are moving towards. It is a future that we are desiring, expecting and believing to happen that gets us to create it, which I think are important to take into mind. For example, we've moved from globalization to digitization, and now we're moving to dispersion. In other words, everything that we used to do that used to get us to congregate in one place is being dispersed. Think about education, hospitals will become telemedicine soon. Think about head offices not being utilized like they used to. Think about restaurants having food being delivered to our homes. Everything is in the process of dispersion. And it's really important for us to understand this idea that the flow of business is changing. But ultimately, the world we're moving into is open for us to create. And there's a great saying that says, when nothing is certain, anything is possible. And we are living in an incredibly uncertain time, which means that we have this opportunity to create anew, to look at the future with fresh eyes. Now, there's a lot of research around this concept that this chapter, this idea of the implosion of the old world has been expected by many, many smart people in many years and decades before where we are today. This idea that every structure that we once trusted implicitly is starting to implode on itself. Socioeconomic systems around the world, education, many religions, many structures that we once implicitly trusted, we don't really trust anymore. And this is exactly what we needed in order to be able to create something new. Now, in most businesses and in most people's lives, what people think is what they need to do is really build their strategy moving from a process of A to B to C and on and towards the end of the alphabet. What I think is we need to start with the end in mind and work backwards. It's what is it that you really want to create for yourself, for your business and the world around you? And then how do you take the steps the actions create the rituals, habits, and behaviors to bring that reality to fruition. And that's the real trick here is that strategy should always be worked from the end in mind backwards rather than from starting from point A and moving forwards. Now, if we understand that this COVID-19 is kind of similar to the Black Death in certain ways. You know, the Black Death in Europe in the 14th and 1500s really started to see the devastation and the ending of a whole world that we people were used to, you know, that Black Death ended feudalism, their capitalism of the world of the time. It changed the middle class or it created a middle class of sorts. It took away this idea of super wealthy and super poor and it created people who had new knowledge of agriculture, new knowledge of time management, and all of this started to see us move from a place of survival as humanity to a place of sustenance and even to a level of thriving. This Black Death also saw the implosion of the old world to bring about a new world. And this new world back then was called the Italian Renaissance. And the Italian Renaissance was the very first time that we started to celebrate beauty, knowledge, and art. And this was a wonderful time because our focus had gone away from survival and really gone into this idea of looking at art and understanding philosophy and going through that whole process. And because of this process, we are now in this new Renaissance, this new idea of what the future could look like. You see, COVID-19 is seeing the end of capitalism, capitalism as we understand it, and pretty much every other touch point. And we will then come out into a new renaissance post-COVID-19. But this renaissance for me is much more a celebration of our uniqueness, our genius, and our knowledge, beauty, and art, rather than on the outside 
but on the inside. And this gets us to understand that where we are in a world today is a world that's called the surplus world. In other words, education systems around the world have been creating and educating people in pretty much the same way for the last 40, 50 years. And not only in the same way, but in all countries around the world, if you want to become an accountant, if you want to become a lawyer, if you become a doctor, all of these things are pretty much the same education systems that have been given out to students. And so what has happened is now we live in a surplus society. In other words, we have a surplus of engineers, a surplus of accountants, a surplus of lawyers, and a surplus of doctors. And we see that many times just having those degrees doesn't really guarantee you anything in such an uncertain and unstable world. And so the job we have today is not so much to fit in, but to fit out. It's not so much to try and fit into the surplus society, but actually start to create a bubble of our own reality. And it's this renaissance that I'm speaking of, this idea for us to flourish, for us to tap into our genius, that I think will become the future of where we can create natural unity, natural collaboration instead of competition. You see, in a surplus society, competition is obvious and necessary because you're the same as everybody else. And so you have to compete for that sort of market or that job or whatever it may be. It may be. But when we do tap into our genius, when we do move from logical to intuition, when we move away from doing things in a certain way that's been taught to us to becoming curious about the subject that we are the ones that find it curious, meaning it's our curiosity, it's our genius, it's our excitement. When we start tapping into that, there is no competition because there's nobody else who sees the world like we do. So all of a sudden, collaboration becomes obvious and all of a sudden, unity becomes a result of us actually tapping in to our unique genius. So as we speak about future scenarios, what we have to realize is that there is no future. There are multiple futures based on our ability to access our genius and then allow that genius to become the collaborative glue that helps us connect with people around the world to help everybody uplift, everybody awaken, and everybody start to move towards a world that's more transparent, that's more fair, that's more just for everybody, for every living being. And I think that's what we all want, but somehow we have got stories and memories that hold us back to the past, to old ways of living, and really dragging those memories with us into the future won't help anybody, not you, not anybody around you, and not your community in any way. So for me, the future is a result of us healing ourselves, developing the curiosity required to understand what are the invisible dots that we only are able to connect, once we understand that genius, then we get the opportunity to share it with the rest of the world. This really ultimately is what greatness is about. I mean, if you think about it, the greatest people in the world have accessed their genius and shared it to uplift the fabric of humanity. So next time you're reading a trend magazine or reading a trend platform about the future, remember that is only one sliver of the future. There are multiple futures available to all of us. So I urge you to step up, step out, and to rethink and access your genius so you can share it with your world. My name is John Sane. I'm a futures strategist, helping people develop their own futures so that we can all live in a more collaborative and unified world.